Diobandi Pashto and Persian, Dibdi Urdu, Dibdi Bengali, Diobandi Hindi, Devabandi is a revivalist movement within Sunni primarily Hanafi Islam. It is centered in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh, has spread to the United Kingdom, and has a presence in South Africa. The name derives from Dioband, India, where the school Darul Uloom Dioband is situated. The movement was inspired by scholar Shah Walula Delawi (1703–1762) and was founded in 1867 in the wake of the failed Sepoy Rebellion in northern India a decade earlier. Topic: History. The Diobandi movement developed as a reaction to the British colonialism, which was seen by a group of Indian scholars consisting of Rashid Ahmad Gangohi, Muhammad Yaqub Nanatawi, Shah Rafi al-Din, Saeed Muhammad Abid, Dufakar Ali, Fadl al-Rahman Usmani and Muhammad Qasim Nanatvi, to be corrupting Islam. The group founded an Islamic seminary known as Darul Uloom Dioband, where the Islamic revivalist and anti-imperialist ideology of the Diobandis began to develop. In time, the Darul Uloom Dioband became the second largest focal point of Islamic teaching and research after the Al Azhar University, Cairo. Through the organizations such as Jamiat Alema e Hind and Tablighi Jamaat, the Diobandi ideology began to spread. Graduates of Dioband from countries such as Saudi Arabia, South Africa, China, and Malaysia opened thousands of madaris throughout the world. Towards the time of Indian independence, the Diobandis advocated a notion of composite nationalism by which Hindus and Muslims were seen as one nation who were asked to be united in the struggle against the British. In 1919, a large group of Diobandi scholars formed the political party Jamiat Alema e Hind and opposed the Pakistan movement. A minority group joined Muhammad Ali Jinnah's Muslim League, forming the Jamiat Alema e Islam in 1945. Presence In India The Diobandi movement in India is controlled by the Darul Uloom Dioband and the Jamiat Alema e Hind. About 20% of the Indian Muslims identify as Diobandi. Even though a minority, the Diobandis form the dominant group among Indian Muslims due to their access to state resources and representation in Muslim bodies. The Diobandis are referred to as Wahhabis by their opponents the Barelvis and the Shias. In reality, they are not Wahhabis, even though they share many of their beliefs. The true Wahhabis among Indian Muslims are said to be fewer than 5%. <inaudible> in Pakistan An estimated 15-20% of Pakistan's Sunni Muslims consider themselves Diobandi. According to Heritage Online, nearly 65% of the total seminaries madrasa in Pakistan are run by Diobandis, whereas 25% are run by Barelvis, 6% by Al-I Hadith and 3% by various Shia organizations. The Diobandi movement in Pakistan was a major recipient of funding from Saudi Arabia from the early 1980s up until the early 2000s, where after this funding was diverted to the rival Al-Al Hadith movement. Having seen Dioband as a counterbalance to Iranian influence in the region, Saudi funding is now strictly reserved for the Al Al Hadith. Many Diobandi schools in Pakistan teach Wahhabi principles. Topic: In the United Kingdom. In the 1970s, Diobandis opened the first British-based Muslim religious seminaries Dar -ul -ulums, educating imams and religious scholars. Diobandis have been quietly meeting the religious and spiritual needs of a significant proportion of British Muslims, and are perhaps the most influential British Muslim group. According to a 2007 investigation, by the Times, about 600 of Britain's nearly 1,500 mosques were under the control of a hardline sect, whose leading preacher loathed Western values, called on Muslims to shed blood for Allah and preached contempt for Jews, Christians and Hindus. The same investigative report further said that 17 of the country's 26 Islamic seminaries follow the ultra-conservative Diobandi teachings which the Times said had given birth to the Taliban. 
According to the Times almost 80% of all domestically trained Alema were being trained in these hard-line seminaries. An opinion column in The Guardian described this investigation as a toxic mixture of fact, exaggeration and outright nonsense. In 2014 it was reported that 45% of Britain's mosques and nearly all the UK-based training of Islamic scholars are controlled by the Diobandi, the largest single Islamic group. <laughs> <laughs> Beliefs The Diobandi movement sees itself as a scholastic tradition, situated within Sunni Islam. It grew out of the Islamic scholastic tradition of medieval Transoxania and Mughal India, and it considers its visionary forefather to be Shah Walula Delawi (1703–1762), the celebrated Indian Islamic scholar. Topic: <laughs> Fiqh Islamic law. Diobandis are strong proponents of the doctrine of taqlid. In other words, they believe that a Muslim must adhere to one of the four schools madhabs of Sunni Islamic law and generally discourage inter-school eclecticism. They themselves are predominantly followers of the Hanafi school. Students at madrasas affiliated with the Diobandi movement study the classic books of Hanafi law such as Nur al-Aida, Muqtasar al-Qadori, Shar al-Wiqaya, and Kanz al daqiq culminating their study of the Madhab with the Hidayah of al-Marghanani. With regard to views on Taqlid, one of their main opposing reformist groups are the Al-I Hadith, also known as the Ger Muqalid, the nonconformists, because they eschewed Taqlid in favor of the direct use of Quran and Hadith. They often accuse those who adhere to the rulings of one scholar or legal school of blind imitation, and frequently demand scriptural evidence for every argument and legal ruling. Almost since the very beginnings of the movement, Diobandi scholars have generated a copious amount of scholarly output in an attempt to defend their adherence to a madhab in general. In particular, Diobandis have penned much literature in defense of their argument that the Hanafi Madhab is in complete accordance with the Quran and Hadith. In response to this need to defend their Madhab in the light of Scripture, Diobandis became particularly distinguished for their unprecedented salience to the study of Hadith in their madrasas. Their madrasa curriculum incorporates a feature unique among the global arena of Islamic scholarship, the Dora e Hadis, the capstone year of a student's advanced madrasa training, in which all six canonical collections of the Sunni Hadith the Siha Siddha are reviewed. In a Diobandi madrasa, the position of Sheikh al Hadith, or the resident professor of Sahih Bukhari, is held in much reverence. Theology In tenets of faith, the Diobandis follow the Maturidi school of Islamic theology. Their schools teach a short text on beliefs by the Maturidi scholar Nasafi. <laughs> Sufism Dioband's curriculum combined the study of Islamic scriptures Quran, Hadith and law with rational subjects logic, philosophy and science. At the same time it was Sufi in orientation and affiliated with the Chisti order. Its Sufism however, was closely integrated with Hadith scholarship and the proper legal practice of Islam, according to Kari Muhammad Tayyib, the 8th rector or Motamim of the Darul Uloom Dioband who died in 1983. The Ulema of Dioband in conduct are Sufis in Suluk they are Chisti a Sufi order. They are initiates of the Chishya, Naqshbandiya, Qadriya, and Surawardiya Sufi orders. The founders of the Diobandi movement, Rashid Ahmad Gangohi and Muhammad Qasim Nanatvi, studied Sufism at the feet of Haji Imdadullah Muhahir Maki. Darul Uloom Dioband's conservatism and fundamentalist theology has latterly led to a de facto fusion of its teachings with Wahhabism in Pakistan, which has all but shattered the mystical Sufi presence. There. Recently Arshad Madani, an influential leader of Jamiat Alema e Hind rejected Sufism and said, Sufism is no sect of Islam. It is not found in the Quran or Hadith. So what is Sufism in itself? Sufism is nothing. <laughs> Dawa proselytizing movements Um, 
Topic: Jamiat Alema e Hind. Jamiat Alema e Hind is one of the leading Islamic organizations in India. It was founded in British India in 1919 by Abdul Mohasim Sajjad, Qazi Hussain Ahmed, Ahmed Saeed Delvi, and Mufti Muhammad Naeem Ludianvi and the most importantly Mufti Kifayatullah who was elected the first president of Jamiat and remained in this post for 20 years. The Jamiat has propounded a theological basis for its nationalistic philosophy. Their thesis is that Muslims and non-Muslims have entered upon a mutual contract in India since independence, to establish a secular state. The Constitution of India represents this contract. <laughs> Jamiat Alema e Islam Jamiat Alema e Islam is a Diobandi organization, part of the Diobandi movement. The JUI formed when members broke from the Jamiat Alema e Hind in 1945 after that organization backed the Indian National Congress against the Muslim League's lobby for a separate Pakistan. The first president of the JUI was Shabir Ahmad Usmani. <laughs> Majlis e Arur e Islam Majlis e Arur e Islam Urdu, Miles Ar -al -Islam, also known in short as Arur, was a conservative Diobandi political party in the Indian subcontinent during the British Raj prior to the independence of Pakistan founded December 29, 1929 at Lahore. Chaudhry Afzal Haq, Syed Atta Ullah Shah Bukhari, Habib ur Rahman Ludianvi, Mazar Ali Azhar, Zafar Ali Khan and Dawood Ghaznavi were the founders of the party. The Arur was composed of Indian Muslims disillusioned by the Khilafat movement, which cleaved closer to the Congress party. The party was associated with opposition to Muhammad Ali Jinnah and establishment of an independent Pakistan as well as criticism of the Qadiani community. After the independence of Pakistan in 1947, Majlis e Arur divided in two parts. Now, Majlis e Arur e Islam is working for the sake of Muhammad, Nifaz Hakamat e Ilahaya, and Khidmat e Kalk. In Pakistan, our secretariat is in Lahore and in India it is based in Ludhiana. Tablighi Jamaat Tablighi Jamaat, a non-political Muslim missionary organization, began as an offshoot of the Diobandi movement. Its inception is believed to be a response to Hindu reform movements, which were considered a threat to vulnerable and non-practicing Muslims. It gradually expanded from a local to a national organization, and finally to a transnational movement with followers in over 150 countries. Although its beginnings were from the Diobandi movement, no particular interpretation of Islam has been endorsed since the beginning of the movement. <laughs> Associated political organizations Jamiat Alema e Hind, Jamiat Alema e Islam, Majlis e Arur e Islam, Arur Party, India, Sipa e Sahaba Pakistan, Pan Malaysian Islamic Party, Malaysia. Topic: <laughs> Associated militant organizations. Lashka-e-Jongvi Lashka-e-Jongvi Army of Jongvi is a militant organization. Formed in 1996, it has operated in Pakistan since Sipa-e-Sahaba Riaz Basra broke away from the SSP over differences with his seniors. The group is considered a terrorist group by Pakistan and the United States, and continues to be involved in attacks on Shia civilians and protectors of them. Lashkar e Jongvi is predominantly Punjabi. The group has been labeled by intelligence officials in Pakistan as a major security threat. Topic: <laughs> Taliban. The Taliban students. Alternative Spelling Taliban, is an Islamic fundamentalist political movement in Afghanistan. 
It spread into Afghanistan and formed a government, ruling as the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan from September 1996 until December 2001, with Kandahar as the capital. While in power, it enforced its strict interpretation of Sharia law. While many leading Muslims and Islamic scholars have been highly critical of the Taliban's interpretations of Islamic law, the Darul Uloom Dioband has consistently supported the Taliban in Afghanistan, including their 2001 destruction of the Buddhas of Bamiyan, and the majority of the Taliban's leaders were influenced by Diobandi fundamentalism. Pashtunwali, the Pashtun tribal code, also played a significant role in the Taliban's legislation. The Taliban were condemned internationally for their brutal treatment of women. Topic: Turek i Taliban Pakistan. Turek i Taliban Pakistan, the TTP, alternatively referred to as the Pakistani Taliban, is an umbrella organization of various Islamist militant groups based in the northwestern federally administered tribal areas along the Afghan border in Pakistan. In December 2007 about 13 groups united under the leadership of Baitullah Mesud to form the Turek i Taliban Pakistan among the Turek i Taliban Pakistan's stated objectives are resistance against the Pakistani state enforcement of their interpretation of sharia and a plan to unite against NATO led forces in Afghanistan the TTP is not directly affiliated with the Afghan Taliban movement led by Mullah Omar with both groups differing greatly in their histories strategic goals and interests although they both share a primarily Diobandi interpretation of Islam and are predominantly Pashtun. Sipa-e-Sahaba Sipa-e-Sahaba Pakistan is a banned Pakistani militant organization, and a formerly registered Pakistani political party. Established in the early 1980s in Jang by the militant leader Haq Nawaz Jangvi, its stated goal is primarily to deter major Shiite influence in Pakistan in the wake of the Iranian Revolution. The organization was banned by President Pervez Musharraf in 2002 as being a terrorist group under the Anti-Terrorism Act of 1997. In October 2000 Masood Azhar, another militant leader, and founder of jaish e muhammad Jem, was quoted as saying that Sipa-e-Sahaba stands shoulder to shoulder with jaish e muhammad in jihad." A leaked U.S. diplomatic cable described JEM as another SSP breakaway Diobandi organization. <laughs> Notable institutions <laughs> India. List of Diobandi Universities Darul Uloom Dioband, Uttar Pradesh, India Darul Uloom Nadwadal Ulama, Lucknow, India Mazahirul Uloom Saharanpur, India Madrasa al Baqiyat as Salihat, Velour, Tamil Nadu, India Madrasa Kashiful Huda, Pumamali, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India Madrasa Mithahal Uloom, Melvishuram, Velour, Tamil Nadu, India Jamia Islamia Ishatul Uloom, Akalkua, Nandarbar District, Maharashtra, India Jamiatul Qasim Darul Uloom al Islamiyah, Indo Nepal border, Bihar, India Pakistan Jamia Uloom ul Islamia, Banori Town, Karachi, Pakistan Darul Uloom Haqqaniya, Akora Khatak, Pakistan Darul Uloom Karachi, Karachi, Pakistan Jamia Ashrafia, Lahore, Pakistan Jamia Banoria, Karachi, Pakistan Asan ul Uloom, Karachi, Pakistan Jamia Tor Rashid, Karachi, Karachi, Pakistan Bangladesh Al Jamiatul Aliyah Darul Ulam Moinul Islam, Chittagong, Bangladesh, Jamia Islamia Yunyuja Brahmanbaria, Bangladesh, Jamia Ramania Arabia Dhaka, Bangladesh, Jamia Karania Arabia Lalba, Dhaka, Bangladesh United Kingdom 
Dar al Ulam al Arabiya al Islamiya, Holcomb, Barry, popularly known as Dar al Ulum Barry. It is historically the first madrasa established in the UK, in 1975. Many of the newer madrasas are its branches, or founded by its graduates. Jamia Taylim al Islam, Dewsbury was established in 1981 by the Tablighi Jamat. Jamia Ulumul Quran, Leicester. This madrasa was established in Leicester in 1977 by Adam D.B. It has over 600 students and graduates of the exegesis and jurisprudence course. South Africa Darul Ulam Newcastle, Newcastle, KwaZulu Natal, the first Diobandi Madrasa in South Africa, it was founded in 1971 by Qasim Muhammad Sima. Al Madrasa al Arabiya al Islamiyya, Azadvil is connected with both the teachings of Muhammad Zakariya Kanshlawi and Ashraf Ali Thanwi. Several of its graduates are Western students especially from the UK and United States the school is also important within South Africa as a site for activities of the Tablighi Jamaat. English textbooks from this madrasa are used in English medium Diobandi madrasas in the West to teach the Dars e Nizami curriculum. Dar al Ulam Zakaria, Zakaria Park, Lanasia was founded by disciples of Muhammad Zakaria Kanshlawi, the school's namesake. The school is also important within South Africa as a site for activities of the Tablighi Jama'a. Madrasa Inamiya, Camperdown, KwaZulu Natal. This madrasa is recognized for its Dar al Iftaa, Department of Fatwa Research and Training, which runs the popular online fatwa service, askamum.org. <laughs> Topic: United States and Canada. Darul Uloom New York New York City, United States Al Rashid Islamic Institute, Ontario, Canada Darul Uloom Canada, Ontario, Canada Darul Uloom Al Madania, Buffalo, New York Iran Jamia Darul Uloom Zahedan, Zahedan, Iran Topic Scholars Topic Founding Figures Muhammad Qasim Nanatvi eighteen thirty two to eighteen eighty Topic Patrons Muhammad Qasim Nanatvi 1833–1880 Maulana Rashid Ahmad Gangohi 1827–1905 Ashraf Ali Thanwi 1863–1943 Muhammad Mian Mansour Ansari 1894–1946 Other associated scholars Mahmud al Hassan, popularly known as Sheikh al Hind, Hussain Ahmed Madani, Ashraf Ali Thanwi, Anwar Shah Kashmiri, Muhammad Ilyas al Kanshlawi, founder of Tablighi Jamaat, Muhammad Zakariya al Kandalawi, Shabir Ahmad Usmani, Muhammad Shafi Usmani, first Grand Mufti of Pakistan. Topic: Contemporary Diobandis. Muhammad Taqi Usmani, Pakistan, Vice President of Dar al Ulam Karachi, former judge on the Sharia appellate bench of the Supreme Court of Pakistan, Deputy Chairman of the Islamic Fiqh Academy of the OIC, leading scholar of Islamic finance, and often considered to be a leading scholar and figurehead of the Diobandi movement. Muhammad Rafi Usmani, Pakistan, current Grand Mufti of Pakistan and President and Senior Lecturer of Dar al Ulam Karachi. Ibrahim Desai, South Africa, Mufti and Senior Lecturer at Madrasa Inamiya in Camperdown, and Head of the popular online fatwa website, askamum.org. Haji Abdul Wahab, current Amir of Tablighi Jamaat Pakistan Chapter. Yusuf Motala, UK, founder and senior lecturer at Dar al-Ulam Bari, one of the oldest Diobandi madrasas in the West. <laughs> <laughs> 
He is a scholar's scholar. Many of the United Kingdom's young Diobandi scholars have studied under his patronage. Allama Khalid Mahmood, UK, he is the founder and director of the Islamic Academy of Manchester, which was established in 1974. He served formerly as a professor at Murray College Sialkot and also at Mao College Lahore. He obtained a PhD in comparative religion from University of Birmingham in 1970. He has authored over 50 books, and has served as the Justice of Supreme Court of Pakistan Shariat Appellate Bench. Tariq Jamil, Pakistan, prominent scholar and preacher from the Tablighi Jama'a. See also Islam in Afghanistan Islam in Bangladesh Islam in India Islam in Pakistan Islam in South Africa Islam in the United Kingdom Islamic schools and branches Salafism Wahhabi movement Islamic fundamentalism <laughs>